The fourth generation of Pokemon has always been one of my favorites, and if you include the Gen 2 remakes, then it no doubtably is. This generation brought forth a lot of interesting mechanics and also acted as almost a sequel or at least a successor to the second generation. Whereas Gen 3 kind of felt like it was its own separate entity, the fourth generation brought forth a ton of evolutions to Pokemon from previous generations, and despite some stinkers being present, others were some of the best designs in the series. Now that being said, given the recent leaks, we know Gen 4 remakes are more than likely coming, but I am worried about them. Making the Gen 4 remake something great shouldn't really be a daunting task for the largest franchise in the world, especially since they already have a reference to work from and the engine of Sword and Shield to boot. This seems like a no-brainer when you look at high-quality games such as Fire Red and Leaf Green, and especially Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where they specifically went out of their way to make the games the best they could possibly be, while yes, being remakes of the original, but also incorporating brand new ideas, mechanics, and more. The goal of this video is to not be a what I want for Gen 4 remakes video. This is instead aims to provide a simple guide on how to make sure that the Generation 4 remakes are number one, acceptable titles that are able to stand alongside games such as Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and two, justify that $60 price tag. We're going to talk about what in my opinion has been the decline in remake quality, and this isn't just a Game Freak problem, this is actually a Nintendo problem, and given how the new trend of Pokemon games seemingly being targeted towards an even younger audience than in the past has subsequently caused the games to be watered down and how that could negatively affect these titles. This isn't a Pokemon Sucks video. Video, but it's more of a critical take on past behaviors, and it's no secret that past behaviors are the greatest determinant of future behavior. Either way, this intro has lagged on enough, so I think we can dive right in. Okay, so I have four main talking points that I'd like to uh, go over, and we're going to start now. So number one is don't strip features. Now, when Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out, I personally had issues with them cutting out the Sevi Isles, amongst other things such as abilities, held items, etc. Now, whether or not Let's Go can be considered a main series title is up for debate, but nevertheless, a common counter argument to my perspective was that it was a remake of Yellow, not Fire Red and Leaf Green, so therefore the Sevi Isles shouldn't exist. I honestly find this a lousy argument. Basically, what this argument says is that it's okay for them to charge $60 for a game with less features than a similar game created for a handheld console 13 years before as long as it's not a direct remake of said game. This baffles me because why wouldn't you want a game that takes elements from the upgraded versions? Heart Gold and Soul Silver are basically crystal remakes with all of the Suicune integration, and on top of that, it included a Safari Zone, which was completely cut from Gen 2, rebuilt areas that were also cut due to limitations on the hardware, like Viridian Forest, and even more so than that, they could have easily gotten away with no Battle Tower since Gold and Silver didn't have one, but you know what they did instead? They brought forth the Battle Frontier from Sinnoh because why not? Now sure, yes, it was a copy-paste from Platinum, but the point is that the originals didn't have these things, and I'm sorry, but simply upgrading graphics on a game that is for a handheld console does not justify a full price. Even Activision released all three Spyro games and all three Crash games fully remade from the ground up at a discounted $40. Again, this isn't a Game Freak problem, this is a Nintendo problem. Look at games like Link's Awakening, uh, Twilight Princess HD, the Mario Collection, etc. These games should have been discounted but weren't. Either way, the point I'm trying to make is that the Diamond and Pearl remakes really need to integrate some of those Pokemon Platinum features like the Battle Frontier. Fans were not happy about Oras missing said feature, so don't screw people over again because kids these days don't like a challenge. Guess what? A large portion of your audience are adults, and realistically, it's not that hard to please us. Number two, hand-holding. Now, Sinnoh's an expansive region with many different routes and areas to explore. You could easily go off the beaten path, and this goes into the whole hand-holding thing. Don't force extra linearity or arbitrary dialogue for the express purpose of telling me where to go, or at least if you're going to do that, let me toggle it off. Pokemon Sword and Shield, Sun and Moon, and X and Y were filled with what I like to call useless cutscenes. Characters will say something non-consequential, and then tell you where to go, and then leave. Sometimes they'll even take you there. I mean, I swear to god, every single route in Gen 8 has someone trying to tell you something of zero substance. It's like, at least with games like Platinum or Black and White, yes, there is a lot of dialogue, but it generally speaking pertains to the game's story or is trying to establish some sort of world building. Whereas, as of late, it's just like, wow, I love Pokemon, have a goddamn Malasada, bye, please for the love of God. Let us skip this or just don't do it. The third thing I want to talk about is difficulty. Now, this sort of goes back to the last point about hand-holding, but basically difficulty is something that has been lacking overall in most Pokemon games, but especially as of late. Features like the forced EXP share and 
gaining XP after capture further causes problems. I remember in Sword and Shield I was scared to explore the wild area with the issue that I'd become completely over level just by catching all the mons I don't have. This is a big worry for me because the game will piggyback off of the Gen 8 engine, such as Oras which used Gen 6's experience share, it seems that we'll get stuck with that too. Other than that, all they really have to do is just keep the NPCs the way they were in Platinum and leave level scaling as is. The native games aren't Dark Souls or super difficult by any means, but they're at least not 100% mindless. Optimally, we'd get a difficulty option, but let's be real, I'm not expecting that, and if it does come, it'll likely be scrapped in a future generation like other beloved mechanics. Now, number four, complete the national decks. Now, no, this isn't a Dexit uh, comment on Jinichi Masuda's personal pictures type thing. This is just more of a sensical thing. Sword and Shield already feature around 600 of the Pokemon available, so if Gen 4 brings like only an extra 200 instead of 300, it would literally just leave like 100 Pokemon out. It would be kind of dumb. I figure when these games come out, they could have a patch for Sword and Shield that makes all the games within the same generation compatible, and then everyone can at least be a little happier with uh, the competitive scene and stuff like that. I'd really like to see Mega Evolutions uh, make a return. Z moves, as much as some people want to see them return, they're more so moves, so I could see them staying cut, but Mega Evolutions are actual form, so it would be nice to have them come back in the game in some way. Once all the Pokemon are on console, there's literally no good reason to cut them again unless they're actually going to improve the animations and models. So at the very least, we should be able to use every Pokemon. Now on a side note, this is a pipe dream, but I would like them to see add some Gen 4 Megas for the remakes, and you know when Gen 5 remakes come out, we can get Gen 5 Megas or whatever, but as much as I'd like this, I think they're going to end up using Dynamax and Gigantamax as the main feature of Diamond and Pearl remakes, because it's just going to be easier for them to do. Now all in all, as critical as this video has been, I really do love Pokemon, and I and many others have just been disappointed as of late, especially given the automatic hostility that comes from simply criticizing the game. Game. Now this isn't anything new in gaming, I've even seen this sort of overly defensiveness in this genre alone, but it's just because Pokemon's so big it comes with the biggest pushback. That said, this video is a sentiment to older fans who would love to see games that cater to everyone and not just kids. I can still play the first five generations of Pokemon and not feel patronized, and I really want the franchise to go back to that. The uprising of the monster taming genre is proof that older fans of Pokemon do exist and a lot of them aren't happy and that's why they're switching over. There's a lot of small things that the Pokemon company could do that would make a lot of fans happy and it's just sad to see that they don't care. Now that said, I am still cautiously excited for the Gen 4 remakes and I really do hope that it follows in the footsteps of the Gen 2 remakes which are my favorite Pokemon games of all time. Let me know what your guys thoughts are on the whole Gen 4 remake situation and if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more monster taming content. You can follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd. Check out our subscriber Discord, all links in the description. Until next time, peace.